Aloha, I'm Pat Lindquist, president of Nipili Bay and Beach Foundation. Today, I want to introduce Ian Horswell, president of Rising Tide Engineering, and he is going to share plans for restoring Nipili Beach. We are looking forward to improving the health of Nipili Beach and Bay for all who love it. Aloha. Ian? Thanks for the introduction, Pat. As an engineer and project manager of more than 30 years, I occasionally find myself partway into a complex project but before I step back and consider what the real goals are and what we're really trying to accomplish. However, when I think about my work in connection with the fundamentals of project management, I'm almost always more successful. This technical information series called Tech Talks has been developed to share the core questions of the five W's, why, what, who, when, and where with you, the community at large, and an interested reader or a potential donor. We will be starting this series with the whys of the Nepali Beach Restoration Project, and we'll continue through the rest of these core questions over the coming months. Okay, let's get started. First question is, why has the Nepali Beach sand eroded? It's a great question that's going around all over the Hawaiian Islands. The beach, the beach at Napili is prominently facing west-northwest with exposure to heavy winter swells from the north and northwest and summer swells and local storm seas created by hurricanes in late summer and Kona storms as well. I'll show you that. You can see here that North Pacific swell, the Northeast trade winds that create swell. And this is where we are in the island right there. The deck Kona storms that can be significant, they're short lived, and southern swells, as well as the annual tropical storms that may track over the islands. So all that adds up to longshore sand transport cross shore transport and overwash of waves during high tides and significant wave heights, which cause the erosion called beach sand pullout. The sea level rise adds to the erosion as well. Depleted coral reefs and reef openings and increased sea level rise in king tides within the Napili Bay allow more wave energy into the bay, exacerbating the wave run up and the beach and sand erosion problem. Okay, why are we worried about sand eroding? This is the second question that we got. Well, we're worried because over the last 50 years, the beach has narrowed 42%. More recently in the last decade, from 2007 to 2018, the beach has lost 6,500 cubic yards of sand or 28%. And over one year from 2018 to the end of 2019, the beach lost almost a thousand cubic yards of sand. The annual erosion rate and loss of beach sand is trending higher, mostly due to sea level rise and increased storminess. If we do nothing, Napili Beach will disappear. There are no sand dunes behind the beach. The sand that's on the beach is all there is. I will show you a figure that shows the historical shorelines as done by the UH Coastal Geological Group. And it shows the recession of the beach moving from here back to its present day and it is getting worse. Okay, the third question is why do we need a beach at Napili to be wider, thicker and higher than it is today? Well, if we rebuild the beach, we are proposing to move the toe or bottom of the beach 25 to 30 feet in Makai of its current location and to restore the beach to its historical condition in around 1990. A wider beach can reduce storm damage to the resorts, buildings, and coastal structures by dissipating energy 
across the surf stone, protecting upland structures. A bigger beach will minimize the degradation of the bay's water quality by stopping the runoff of soils and loams from the upper beach trees and lawns that cause a lot of turbidity. I'll show you another figure here that shows the significance of this turbidity. This figure shows in July 2019, almost a chocolate brown color, that is the sea house restaurant in the background in the Pili Kai, you can see this incredibly turbid brown water. It does disappear, but it causes some problems and is certainly uh, not very uh, good to look at. A bigger beach will act as a better filter system to slow the migration of herbicides from the upcountry agricultural developments down. A wider beach will improve the recreational use of the beach by the community and tourists with more beach room for sunbathing, playing, swimming, etc. The proposed new beach will improve aesthetics, It'll look great as it already does, but it'll just be bigger. A bigger beach will also provide nesting and resting grounds for sea turtles, monk seals, and shorebirds, very important part. So moving along to a question that somebody else sent in to us, why can't we just build a seawall or use large boulders like we see in front of other properties and resort buildings? Well, today property owners are no longer allowed to build seawalls. It's called shoreline hardening. And what happens is if you put in a seawall in very little time, you'll have the potential to lose your entire beach due to narrowing and increased erosion caused by the seawall. Question five, why aren't you putting a breakwater out in the bay first to keep the sand on the beach? An excellent suggestion. A breakwater acts as a barrier to dissipate the energy of the waves. After what your coral reef does and used to do better when there was a lot of higher reef. After the beach project, we're looking at doing a coral restoration project, which will accomplish both goals. Question six, why are we going to spend roughly 2.8 million to do this beach restoration project? Yes, it's a lot of money, but the project will last roughly 10 years. Once this project has been done the first time, it will become a maintenance project, which should minimize the upfront technical and regulatory costs. It will not require as much sand dredging or placement, which should lower costs as well. Why do we have to pay for the cost of restoring the Napili Beach? Well, unfortunately, at this time, there's very limited government money sources. The NBBF or Napili Bay and Beach Foundation are actively looking at the options for outside sourcing. It's true that the private landowners and citizens have, to, and the community at large have to shoulder the majority of the costs of restoring the beach at the present time. The Napili Bay and Beach Foundation are actively raising money through ongoing donations from private individuals and businesses. They have been successful raising enough money to pay for the costs of the technical studies and regulatory applications to date. The foundation are engaged in writing grants to various sources, such as FEMA for the big money involved in the final steps of the project, including dredging, dewatering, and shaping the beach. That's all the questions we have for today. Thank you for watching the Pili Bay and Beach Foundation Tech Talks, the first in our website beach restoration series. The next part, which will come over the next month or so, will be the what's of the project. We look forward to you joining us at that time. Thanks.